It's time for 50 more Quagsire. I should probably change the name of the stream from Monster Rancher to the actual Quagsire thing. I thought setup was a little bit fast. I believe today is day 17? sure it's day 17. Uh, day 17. Alright. Let's see, what's today's date? 24. So we've got today... 4th, 25th, 26th, 27th, 28th, 29th, 30th, 31st. So I've got eight days left. Which means two of those days have to be 100 hunts and the rest of them can be 50. Hitting 3,500 at by the end of the month. Yes, we're hitting 3 3050 uh, in this stream. Uh. Somniac back with 100 bit saying, uh, "Pokemon, not to be confused with Weir Al the Polka Man." Uh, assuming none of these 3,000 are rerolls, there is now a one in 5,192 chance. God, I wish I could be as optimistic as you, because that is not how it works. I still don't understand the explanation that people give where it's like, where if you if you've got three wires on a bomb, and, you ch and you're about to choose to cut one, and someone tells you that one of the wires that you're not cutting is the wrong wire, for some reason that makes the opposite wire have a better chance nope. of being the correct wire. I don't understand that. The Monty Hall problem, yeah. Well, no, it's the way I've seen it explained is that three wires, let's say red, blue, and yellow. I go to cut the yellow. Uh, as I'm going to cut the yellow, I haven't cut it yet, but as I'm going to cut the yellow, someone tells me that the blue wire is the wrong wire. Like, if I cut the blue wire, it'll explode. For some reason, that makes the red wire's chance two-thirds, two to three, and that makes the, the blue wire, the one that I was, or the yellow wire, the one that I was going to cut, still, still a one-third chance. You were twice as likely to pick wrong initially.
So the idea is because I chose... So, so the idea is that because I chose from a set of three that got reduced to a set of two, that suddenly makes... That's so, the... I choose from a set of three, and after I've chosen but haven't acted on it, it becomes a set of two, and for some reason, once that, once... Once it becomes a set of two, instead of becoming 50-50, it just compounds the odds onto the other one. Oh boy. Puppy playtime is happening. A equals one-third and B plus C equals two-thirds. Ah. Nope. But again, if I were to... Why does eliminating B or C from that still equal two-thirds? was moving forward. Manatee was, like, bracing against it and pushing me forward. Ah! That's done. Okay. We're done. Hey! Hey! Bum, bum, bum. Come here, bud. Come here. No, buddy, I gotta check. You okay? Let me check on you. Come here. Come here. All right, let me check on you. Bite your heart. Bite your heart. You land. You just landed on me or something. Nah, eh, Christian plays a little hard. Avoid my, uh, my touching my bed because I know once I do a pass out, go to bed. Sleep is for the healthy. Should be more subdued to face with the big dog. No. Because he has been. And he just squares up. To, I had to text somebody, so I had to move away from VTube Studio. And deactivate, and then activate.
The moment you chose, there are no longer three groups, but two. I saw her face. Now I'm a believer. Not a trace of doubt in my mind. I'm in love. I'm a believer. Like, when exactly does it turn from... Does the one that you don't choose that's still a possible option turn from... A... A one-third to a two-thirds chance of, of working? Nope. Is it the moment where I is is it the moment where I make the choice or is it the moment where I'm told that one of the ones that I didn't choose was the is a wrong choice? It's both the one you didn't choose have combined to right, but then Someone else says, but then like somebody who knows the, the circuitry of the bomb, let's say like the, the, the person who has the bomb, or the person who made the bomb is watching, and like, you know, as like a sick game, they say, you are you say, oh, I'm gonna cut the yellow wire, and they say, well, hold on a second now, uh, don't cut the blue wire because that one's incorrect. And assuming they're telling the truth, why does that make the red wire have a, uh, a two-thirds chance? When they remove had a 0% chance. But why does that reduce the chance of the... Why does that reduce the chance of the first one? The better analogy is choose one. Make sure that one of the doors... That one of the doors you didn't choose... Seven percent minus zero. But where is that coming from? I understand. I, uh, okay, so I understand that the two you didn't choose are a set of two, and one of them has a zero percent chance. And when it's revealed that one of them has a zero percent chance, when it's revealed one of them has a zero percent chance, why doesn't why don't those odds get split between the two of them? you're already more likely to be wrong? 
They can't be both two thirds because then that's over 100%. The issue with the Monty Hall problem is that it doesn't magically increase the odds. Just because you eliminate an option doesn't make the other two increase or decrease. Pick a door, you got 33% chance. You open the door, you still don't know what's behind it, so you're not going to increase or decrease the odds. But the fact that... But the way it's explained is the fact that, that they reveal that one of those doors is wrong makes the other door you didn't pick have a better chance. Because for some reason, from that set of two of the doors that you didn't choose, revealing one of them, revealing one of them that uh, that you didn't pick is actually wrong, somehow transfers the odds of the of that one that's revealed to be wrong to the other door you didn't pick. The odds of the ones you didn't pick becoming two-thirds, and the guy says one is zero. The other would still be two-thirds. Would it, though? 100 bits uh, from Chomini Egg saying, For the record, we don't give refunds on predictions that failed. Uh, it was in the fine print you signed. So if you were to test this, if you were to if you were to put this into like in into a lab and like test it with a bunch of different people, and there's like there's like a hundred people in in like the pool, then the results would bell curve out to be around one like would be uh, like 33 people. Like, 33 people who ch uh, who first chose their door would be right, and 67 who... So let's, like, if they... Hmm. Nope. You have a group of 100. And they, you know, none of them have contact with each other, yada, yada, yada. Let's say for all intents and purposes they pick the same door, then it's revealed that the, that the other door is the right door. That would... You're saying that the outcome from that would be that... Oh, I see now. I'm starting to get it. I'm starting to get it now. Okay, so... The only thing... that... like... So timing matters. The only thing that, that like, that... So, okay. So... What I'm seeing is that the other door doesn't have a two-thirds probability of being correct. But rather, like, because the information changed after you chose, that door's probability jumps up to 50%. It's like there are two different halves of, like, a, prob of, like, a problem here. Because you... Because you... Because the first door you choose would have a one-third chance of being right before you know. And then once the other door was revealed to be wrong, then the other door would have a 50% chance of being correct because it's only in a set of two. It goes from a set of three to a set of two. The reason it's still a third chance after knowing that the 
So either way, picking the other door does technically have the better chance. Show me the exit with the 100-bit thing. Wasn't this a thing in Brooklyn Nine-Nine? Yes. Inverting which category you're in, and you were likely to be wrong in the first. You were 67% likely to be wrong in the first place. So it's a 60%, 67 chance that the inver inversion is to your benefit. Benefit. Nope. <sighs> it's still not reaching me. I see it as going from a set of three with a one-third chance of being right to going to a set of two, where because you chose the first option before you had knowledge of one of the other doors, it becomes a set of two, so it becomes a 50-50. It becomes a 50% chance on the door you did. Either way, it's still, it's still a better chance on the door you didn't choose. So the first door you choose before you have the information while it's still a set of three is is a 33% chance. I'm kind of going in circles here, but like, but this, this is how I see it. I still, I, I, I guess like I understand it, but like it, it doesn't feel right to me from a logic sense. Cause I like going from, going from 33 to, to 66 doesn't make, that's, that's what doesn't make sense to me. I understand it, but it it it's still it, like I understand it in some regard, but it doesn't make sense to me that going from a set of three to a set of two would automatically make the other one a, a 66% chance as opposed to because like because it, it do, does the chance does the chance have to equal up to 100%? Show me the exit 100 bits thing. Sounds like you need to fuck. Because when you switch doors, you basically switch the section of the pie chart you randomly put yourself in. I understand it. Nope. Bingo! Okay, so I understand it. But... And it's probably not a belief thing either, but this is just like, but how I see it is that it doesn't go from 33 to 60, that, that um, it's because it, it's like, to me, it's because it goes from a set of, a set of, uh, three to a set of two. Case one shows one of three, then you get uh, new information. So now it's case two. Endorse a one third. The door you chose is one third chance of being right. The group of doors has a two third chance of containing the door that is right. Also has 100% chance of at least one door that is wrong. Knowing which door is wrong doesn't, uh, in that set, doesn't change the entire set's odds of being right. Revealing which door uh, in that set is wrong doesn't change the odds. It's a red herring. You are essentially going from choosing one door to choosing two doors. So the only reason it goes up is because you eliminated... But if you were to put that into practice, how many times out of like... Oh man, that's, that's tough to wrap my head around. So, okay, so I, I understand it better now. So it's not... 
So it has nothing to do with like the odds of the door being right, but more to do with the fact that uh, that you're switching from one set to another. Where in one of the sets, one of the wrong ones has been eliminated. Okay. So. Give us your cash! Rational Super the Fire saying 69% of statistics are made up. That's why I work with computers that either like zeros or ones. Like, it makes sense. But once you eliminate that middle door, once you eliminate that one wrong door, this is that you're, you're dividing them into like multiple sets, the one you picked and the two you didn't pick. Yeah, this works. The wrong door being eliminating has no bearing on anything. Why do you go to choosing two doors? You go to choosing two doors because because one of the ones in that set was eliminated? Nope. I still see it as 33% on the door that you initially picked and 30 and 50% and on the other on the door that you didn't pick that's revealed to potentially be right. Show me these on the bit saying all this tells us is who are the math kids in chat. Where the other 17% go? Well, the, well, here's the thing. Like, I, I don't have an answer for that. But I can't say for certain that the other door has a 66% a chance just because one of the ones... The way I see it is that, like, you pick the first door, you get told the other door is... is go I'm still... Uh, I guess I'm still of the mind that it's a 50-50 at that point. But because you chose it before you learned that information about being wrong, it's a 33% chance. And the other door, because it's one of two doors, has a 50% chance. I know it doesn't equal 100%. Let's go, we're going with the doors this time, because that the, the door thing is easier as opposed to the bombs. does though that's how probability works is there data to back this up that like that 66% of the people who did sw like if they, it, who did end up switching 66% of the of the chance 66% of the people who ended up switching ended up being right. <laughs> I don't think this is pulled, Tom. <laughs> Nope. Pretty sure the Mythbusters did an episode on this. <laughs> oh boy, I wonder what these bracers do. Five minutes.
I mean, for the example, we were using doors, but it, it, it's, it's the same problem, essentially. You pick one, you get told that one of the other two that you didn't pick is incorrect. So then you have the option to switch to the other one. Bear bug. I'm gonna let you out there in hopes that you're gonna be good, okay? You want to say something to chat? Come here. Christian. Oh, God. Hi, Christian. Can you speak? Speak. No. Can you speak? Speak. Come here. Speak. <laughs> yeah, good boy. Oh, no. I've started his engine. He's got a, he's got a cow horn, though, so it's fine. the data <laughs> this three door Monty problem nope who am I getting fired Is none of your business. Bone! You like this, when you choose the first door, the question is which door is right out of the three. When you choose whether or not to change, instead of thinking which of the remaining doors is right, I think what are the odds I was wrong the first time? Because you were wrong when you chose because if you were wrong the first time you chose the door, you'd still be wrong the second time. Still don't get it. The pieces of the puzzle are there, but I, I, I can't put them together. We're talking about Monty Hall, yeah. You have a two-thirds chance of being wrong in the first place. You got me. They remove one door you didn't choose, okay? So you would swap because the remaining door has a two-thirds chance of being correct. You lost me.
Nope. All right, let's, all right, bigger data set. What do we got with a bigger data set then? How dare you, Detective Diaz? All right, okay, hold on. Three. Door. Monty door problem explained. Monty hall problem. The Monty hall problem is a teaser in the form of a probability puzzle based on the nominally uh, on the American t television game show Let's Make a Deal, and named after its original host Monty Hall. The problem was originally posed and solved in a letter by Stephen Selvin, the American. Uh, statistician in 1975 became famous as a question from reader Craig F. Whitaker. Letter quoted Marilyn Voss Savant, Ask Marilyn column in Parade Magazine in 1990. Suppose you're on a game show and you're given the choice of three doors. Behind one is a car, behind the other is goats. You pick a door, I uh, say number one. Then the host, who knows what's behind the doors, opens another door, let's say number three, which has a goat. Then he says to you, do you want to pick number two? Is it to your advantage to sw uh, switch your choice? Savant's response was that the contestant should switch to the other door. By the standard assumptions, uh, the switching strategy has a two-thirds probability of winning the car, while the strategy of keeping the initial choice is a one-third probability. When the player makes uh, first makes their choice, there's a two-thirds chance that the car is behind one of the doors not chosen. This probability does not change after the host reveals the goat is behind one of the, one of the doors. When the host provides information about the two unchosen doors, revealing that one of them does not have a car behind it, the two-thirds uh, chance of the car being behind one of the unchosen rests on the unchosen and unrevealed door, as opposed to one-third uh, one chance of the car being behind the door the contestant chose initially. The given probabilities depend on the specific assumptions about how the host and contestant chose their door. An important insight is that with these standard conditions, there's more information about doors two and three than was available at the beginning when door one was chosen by the player. That's why I said 50%. The host action adds value to the door not eliminated, but not the one chosen by the contestant originally. Another previous information is that the latter does uh, not. Other possible behaviors of the, fa of the host and the one described can reveal different additional information or none at all and yield different probabilities. Nope. <laughs> can you see the steam coming out of my ears yet? Many readers of Savant's column refuse to believe that switching is beneficial and reject their explanation. The problem appeared on in parade. Approximately 10,000 readers, including nearly a thousand with PhDs, wrote to the magazine calling Savant wrong. Even when given explanations, simulations, and formal mathematical proofs, many people did not accept that switching is the best strategy. I'm not saying that switching isn't the best strategy. I'm saying that like that. Like, that switching still is the best strategy. But I don't think it's, it's like, two-thirds... I don't think it's, like, it's a it's a two-to-one advantage over the... Wait a minute. I think, I think that gave me the missing link. It becomes a two-to-one advantage. That's where I was getting the 50% from, but it's, but it's not a, but it's not like, it's, it's not like 50% isn't the odds, it's the ratio. Okay, I get it now.
So 50 per it's a 50% ratio, but it but 67% odds. What's wrong? Who was that? Odds and ratios are two different beasts. Yes. But I was able to get to the right odds via ratios. Okay, I see a graph for it now, and it makes a lot more sense now. <laughs> w plus ratio plus car plus goat plus goat again. I'm gonna like the Wikipedia page. If you go down to the part that says uh, simple solutions, that's uh, that's that's what that's what kind of got it to click for me. Savant and the Media Fuhrer, oh my god. Savant wrote in her first column on the Monty Hall problem that the player should switch. She received th several thousand letters from her readers, a vast majority of which from readers with PhDs disagreed with her answer. During 1990-1991, three more of her columns on Parade were devoted to the paradox. Numerous examples of letters reading of Savant's columns are presented and discussed. The Monty Hall Dilemma, a cognitive illusion par excellence. The discussion was replayed in other venues and reported in major newspapers such as the New York Times. In an attempt to clarify her answer, she proposed a shell game to illustrate. You look away, I put a pea under one of the shells. Then I ask you to put your finger on a shell. The odds that your choice contains a pea is one-third, agreed. Then if I simply lift up the, the uh, an empty shell from the remaining two, as I... Ooh, wait, hold on a second. Is this kosher? Hope so. Regardless, uh, as I can and will do this, regardless of what you've chosen, We've learned nothing to allow us to revise the odds on the shell under your finger. Okay, I, I get it now. Not account for the one in twenty-four chance that the door crits you in the process of opening it. The host run that runs that risk twice, regardless of if you switch or not. That's true. Oops. Nope. Let's play a mini game. 
Oh, dang it. Mario 64 credits melody. I'd love to find list for listening after the stream. This is Staff Roll Anniversary Edition. Mother three. Chill comes up to you among us. He says to to pick a uh, pick a uh, a bean that won't that uh, uh pick the bean that won't kill you. Nope. He goes to pick one bean. The um, the among us bean uh, that won't kill you. Picks one among us bean. Chill says that one of the beans that he didn't choose uh will kill you. So then does he does he switch to the other bean? Trick question. Child's given the answer so all of them can kill you. <laughs> Dr. Z is a bit saying the money hall problem does not factor in the game show is a scam. And all three doors are goats that will headbutt you as, uh, as the host steals your wallet. Oh my god. Did I get Sheriff at all that last Among Us game? I was looking forward to performing the pack on Matt. The packed, rather. Let's go shopping! <laughs> I like how I got to the right conclusion about shielding one of those through the wrong answer. Because what is it? I feel like Junk killed Cortilli, and then Shield killed Junk. And then he comes into the meeting and starts like explaining everything. And I'm just like, wait a minute. Whenever he comes into the meeting and just be immediately begins explaining stuff, that usually means he's bad. No jokes, no nothing, just right to business. Mm 
Nope. But here's the but the reason I got to the wrong answer is because he was explaining everything honestly. like that Yu-Gi-Oh puzzle where the guy uh where the the guy wants Yu-Gi to release balloons and he'll blow up different uh different Ferris wheel uh carts but there's only three that are occupied so he gives him a sporting chance by releasing a balloon of the color of the one that that, that doesn't have anybody in it He's trying to figure out what it's about then he realizes it correlates to the flower clock so he tried releasing one again and the guy was like, no, one isn't right. He's like, no, I know you're in one because one in the afternoon means, uh, means, uh, 13, which means you're in car 13. Never get into a land war with China. But only le uh, slightly less known is never getting to a battle of wits with a Sicilian when death is on the line! I've developed an immunity to Iocane Powder. I love that Peter Falk is in that movie. Give me two more bug and then we'll uh, and then I'll I'll let you outside and feed you and play with you a little bit. Wow, Tom, you're in the year 3018? How's the future? It's all right. Um... You know, they elected a gorilla as president. Um... And you know, it's funny. Uh... She tore her vice president in half. And, uh... You know, Congress tried to get her impeached for that. But... You know, the, the general public was just so happy with gorilla president. Uh, that that there were like there, there started to be like 
mass, uh, what are they called? Mass riots over the fact that, um, over, over the fact that they were trying to impeach President nope. Bongo. And so Congress had to step down in order to maintain order because everybody loved, uh, loved uh, President Bongo. Everybody, everybody loves President Bongo here in the future. You look me in the eye and tell me if you've ever seen a president that's had a 93% approval rating. Up to former president Beaver, Beaver arrested for eating uh, for eating the uh, the um, for eating Washington's wooden teeth on display in the Smithsonian. Civility, young bugs. Come here, buddy. Manatee. Come here. You okay? Dogs were playing, Christian was jumping around and landed on Manatee. My favorite thing I've seen on social media recently is that we are living through someone's AP government test questions from the year 2082, followed by, they're gonna tell their friends to just put the dumbest possible answer on every question and they'll likely be correct. Gonna take a break. Be back in a little bit. Check the music off. We're back. We are hunting. And we are hungry like the wolf. Let's battle. Bandana Guy Dival. Oh, right. Rapid Rosalie's a little busted. Yeah. She's fun though. I think the the um I mean like once I got Rapid Rosalina, the character combination I went with the most was um Rabbit Mario, Rabbit Luigi, and Rabbit Rosalina. What are GSPs? German Shepherd puppy?
it. German short hair pointer. Nope. Vanity. Vanity. Come here, bud. Do it. <laughs> Starting to learn more about the Mario Kart meta. And how traction uh, how traction, the traction stat really only works on, um, on tracks that are slippery, which include ones that have, like, rain, ice, mud. One thing I didn't realize as well is that the, uh, the blooper item gives you, uh, like, makes you incredibly slippery. Like the worst, the 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 level with, the, like the level with the worst traction, and like no traction stat. enough the uh the two monster tires and the cushion tires despite having the the highest traction in the game have actually one of the worst tractions in the game because whenever you land they bounce Help with anything? Okay. Nope. Christian. Easy, buddy. Hi, Manatee. Hey. I don't do it. What's this? Okay, well, now Manatee's got this. Uh, Latin, thank you for the raid. Boop. 
<laughs> Christian keeps trying to to play with manatee and we're trying to we're trying to, to keep things calm at the moment. Just a touch too feisty. get a, like a like a little buddy for manatee at some point i learned that you shouldn't get um you shouldn't get what was it you shouldn't get two puppies at a time because uh if you don't raise them right they can kind of like develop their own pack and sort of exclude the humans seeing them as only a means for food and not really as part of the pack Chewing on that, not eating it. What do we got? Here? What is this? It's like a drawstring. But I'm gonna put it up here for now, because I don't know if you're supposed to be playing with this. Nope. So, uh, the Monty Hall problem. <laughs> Tom, no! No, buddy, you can't have it. I don't know if you're supposed to be playing with it, so I'm gonna. T so I took it away for now. You're a good boy, though, boy. If it turns out you can play with it, I'll give it to you. But for now, I gotta work. Montana Max supposed to be the uh, the the pair of like sort of like the the uh, the the younger clone of in Looney Tunes it's supposed to be Elmer Fudd because like Babs and Buster kind of Yosemite Sam. Did Elmer Fudd have an, equ an, an equivalent? Nope. Elmira was Elmer Fudd. 
Oh, duh. Montana, Max, Yosemite, Sam. And Elmira and Elmer. Oh my god, because El because Elmira's like the uh the opposite. Where she's hunting for a pet, whereas Elmer was hunting for for like food. Elmira Duff. Kills me that the reason we got so much Elmira in like in Animaniacs or not Animaniacs in, in like Tiny Toons and like in other Steven Spielberg produced animated shows was because she was Spielberg's favorite. Charlie Adler was Buster, and uh, Tress McNeil was Babs. Elmira was Cree Summer. Pinky was uh, Rob Paulson. Brain was Lori uh, Maurice LaMarche. The name of the uh, the TV movie of Tiny Toons is called How I Spent My Vacation. The word summer doesn't appear in it at all. In the old show and in the new show, uh, the school was, was called Acme University. Scott Worth, our, our usual uh, clone versus clone uh, basketball game is coming up. Let's say we make it a little bit more interesting. Hmm. How about the lo uh, the uh, the loser does the winner's laundry for a week? Woo! Got yourself a deal. Back in the 1980s, secret government employees. Mm-hmm. 
Cleveland Brown. Cleveland Brown. Clone High is a really good show. I mean, obviously it didn't age well because it was an it was an MTV show in the mid two thousands, but it's really funny. What's this music from Xenoblade Chronicles Two? Every time, like, I hit my keyboard or my mouse by accident, I'm terrified that I'm, like, I'm hovering over something that's gonna, like, end the stream. One of these days, it will happen. Nope. Boa. Suppa, oh, you're a wanna party platter. For supper, I want a party platter. No, no, no! Like this! Good night, Raven. Tom Dex entry for the shiny? Probably not. <laughs> More Ardane? I think we need less Ardane. Nope. Other than five, which GTAs have you played? A little bit of four, and that's about it. And like the entirety of the Saints Row series. That counts as GTA, right? The only, actually, the only Saints Row game I haven't played is is the reboot and Get Out of Hell. Reboot from what I heard is trash. Yeah, I heard that too. I haven't played the reboot, so probably for the best. 
I can get it on like super sta uh, super sale. Then I might get it and give it a shot. I think they went, uh, they, they kind of shot themselves in the foot with Saints Row 4 by having it be, like, way out there. <laughs> I love... I love that it's like, like, um, everyone was waiting for Crackdown 3 and then suddenly Saints Row 4 comes out and it's like, Oh, look, Crackdown 3! Saints Row 4 is basically a supersized DLC for Saints Row 3. Kind of, yeah. Nope. Because what is it? After two, they take down a giant corporation and essentially take it over, which leads to them becoming like high profile heisters and celebrities in three. Hundred and thirty-eight counts of first-degree murder. How do you plead? I figure the statute of limitations is close to one hundred and thirty-eight or one hundred and thirty-two. There's no statute of limitations on murder. Why the fuck not? I love Johnny Gat. Saints Row work as a movie. I'm not entirely sure. Like how like what are we what are we basing that? Which game are we basing it on? Nope. Is where the boss gets a voice. No, actually, it, the boss is a, vo a voice in the first one. Yep. He slash she should say one line at the end of each, um, at the end of, like, each campaign. I don't remember who it was, but it's like one part where they're going up in an elevator for like the last part. One of the guys goes, I'm gonna skull fuck that bitch. And then the player character goes, I'll be like Chlamydia.
A Saints Row show might work. The inner workings of the Third Street Saints and how they take down the the uh, other other criminal organizations around. This is music from Xenoblade Chronicles Three. Nope. A surreal comedy series like Sorry to Bother You or Atlanta would be amazing. I could see it. I feel like it's when you put it... I mean, it depends on whose hands get it, right? The Fallout TV show was good. The Mario movie was pretty faithful, aside from the uh, the questionable 80s music choices. Detective Pikachu was good, yeah. The setting of Detective Pikachu was really cool. Showing like, like making it a live action movie and showing how Pokemon interact with a city is was such a such a unique concept. It was a very uh, a fairly basic plot, but the world building in, in Detective Pikachu was so good. Also, Torterra was one of my favorite Pokemon, so the part with the giant Torterra was really cool. Charlie, what is that? I, I, I don't know, Pim. Ch Charlie, is that Earth? Oh my God, Pim, the Earth is flat. Were the giant Torterra Alpha, Dynamax, or Titans? Neither. Uh, they were, uh, they were experimented on. Detective Pikachu even has that like '80s nightmare fuel with um, uh, the uh, the main antagonist's um, the main antagonist's assistant being a ditto. I want to live forever, so I'm transferring human consciousness into Pokemon. Last time we talked about how, uh, Ditto is gender fluid. No, I mean literally, Ditto is made of gender fluid.
Listen, when the biggest Chad in the Pokemon universe is a blob. Yeah, the biggest Chad in the Pokemon universe is a blob. What's your excuse? <laughs> I'll be at a blob that could become anything, but still. Nope. Go horrific, uh, horrific Pokemon plot. They use a ditto to transform in a way that, uh, in a way that looks modified to set un unfair standards of beauty for Pokemon. Remember the bit from the uh, the Sun and Moon anime where, uh, they're trying to find a ditto. They come across a group of Quagsire. And they go, Okay, look for the one that just has dots for eyes. Uh, one problem. Quagsire all have dots for eyes. This is from Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel. Nope. <laughs> I would love it if there's like a, if I can mod this game in one way. Where, when I start it up, the second the Quagsire is sent out, it tells me whether or not it's shiny. <laughs> you know, standard shiny hunting. Doesn't have a nose. Yeah, he uses that to win uh, to win one of his um, his uh, Budokai te uh, Tenka Tenkaichi Budokai matches against an incredibly smelly opponent, whom he then proceeds to beat up and fart in the face of. OG Dragon Ball is wild, dude. Yep, Bacterian. Lurk command do? Is it something that I should implement? Because I saw some of their first time chat uh, as a first time chatter that said they used a tried to use a lurk command that I don't have. 
Just tells the streamer that the user is lurking. Ah. Mm -hmm. Well, welcome. Thank you for lurking. Welcome to all the lurkers out there who lurk. Pilaf was a bigger threat than Yamcha. <laughs> Damn, got him. Nope. More minutes, buddy, and I'll take a break. Hi, Bob. You're a good boy. I know it's hot in here. Is the song uh, "Hello Banana" from uh, from Super Monkey Ball Banana Mania? America, hello. America, yeah. Hello, hello, hello. see humanoid eye. I just wears a shirt. Mm -hmm. 
Can no longer hear the word banana without hearing it in the minion's voice. Banana! As far as I know, Yu-Gi-Oh! Does, Yu -Oh does not have an Anubis card. Not a monster card, but there are traps. Uh, that are Anubis themed. Nope! Oh boy, I've got the hiccups. Uh, there are th three cards that have Anubis in their name. Two traps, one monster. Curse of Anubis, Judgment of Anubis, and the End of Anubis. All cards face up on the field, all cards and effects that, uh, that target a card in the graveyard or that activate in the graveyard are negated. So it's kind of like a monster version of Necro Valley. The Gravekeepers has an Anubis Mask Man. Interesting. I like how the Gravekeeper cards are also allusions to, um, Marika, Shizu, and Odeon. I feel like one of them is probably Bak uh, Bakora as well. Gravekeeper, one word in that, um, in that archetype? Yes. Heretic. I believe that's the one that's supposed to represent Merrick. This card on the field is unaffected by all the card effects as long as Necro Valley is also on the field. Nope. Man, I'm going through these fast. Gravekeeper Supernaturalist. That's the one that looks like Bakora. Gains the attack and defense equal to the combined original levels of the materials used for its fusion summon times 100. While Necro Valley on the field is card, and any card in your field zone cannot be destroyed by card effects. During your main phase, you can activate this effect. Or, wait, what? During your main phase, you can activate this effect. During the end phase of this turn, add one Gravekeeper's Monster or Necro Valley card from your deck to your hand. You can only use this effect of Gravekeeper Supernaturalist once per turn.
curious about Ojama cards. Like, which ones there are, which ones I have seen and used, and which ones I haven't. Ojamatch, Ojamagic, Ojama Simulation, Ojamuscle. No, sorry, Ojamuscle doesn't exist, I don't think. Ojama Yellow, Ojama Trio, Ojama Red, Ojama Pink. Yep, so I've seen all the Ojama cards. Ojama Pajama, personal favorite. I think Ojamuscle was just for, uh, for, um... Nope. You got this brain. Nope, I lost it. Ojama Muscle was an anime-only card that uh, that boosted uh, Ojama King's attack. The Ojama ABC strategy would be so much better if the combo starter didn't either A, rely on your opponent to attack, or B, rely on your opponent's board to not negate the effect of uh, Ojama Blue in the graveyard. Bardock Ojama. This is uh, Egg Reverie from Sonic Mania. Ojo Muscle's a real card. Mm -hmm. Oh, look into the Arm Dragon archetype. Oh, you know why Ojo uh, Muscle didn't show up there? It's because it's it's. Uh, it doesn't have it, uh, it doesn't spell out Ojama, it spells out Ojama. Like with a U instead of an A. Standard Arm Dragons, the Arm Dragon Thunders. Oh, this is a remix. Uh, we'll just play the Columbo video. There's Dark Arm Dragon. Hardened Armed Dragon. This card is not treated as an Arm Dragon card. Knight Arm Dragon, the Armored Knight Dragon.
Metaphys Armed Dragon, which just has the same attack and defense points as Armed Dragon level 7, but it's a normal monster with no effect. Nope. Pile arm dragon as well. Just put an episode of Columbo up in the corner for us to watch. I think NBC would break my legs. Remember they had to uh, errata Hundred Eyes Dragon because it counted as a Red Eyes card. Hund Red Eyes Dragon. Oh yeah, frog cards except frog the jam. Surely not really. It, it, it counted. Uh, nowhere on the card because it was it was uh, the reason was is that they put a hyphen between hundred and eyes, which is how the red eyes cards are spelled. So they eroded it to just remove the uh, the hyphen. Cardarada, Hundred Eyes Dragon. Wait, how many times was Hundred Eyes Dragon eroded? It's first errata removed the hyphen between its name. Yeah, I imagine speedroids made Viacroids more complicated. Love me my arm dragon catapult cannon. Nope. There is a, uh, there, no, what is it? There's, there's one, uh, there's one Armed Dragon card, which is the sole reason why Armed Dragon, uh, Thunder Level 10 is more or less good. Here we go. Armed Dragon Thunderbolt. Target one Armed Dragon monster you control it gains a thousand attack for each Armed Dragon monster in your graveyard with an equal or lower level to it with different names from each other. So basically that that's that's a way to like boost up Arm Dragon Thunder level 10's uh attack points to get its like its best effect.
You know, someone got a misprint Yu-Gi-Oh card that had a faded Pokemon text on it. I'm gonna need to see that. Because Arm Dragon Thunder level 10 is pretty solid as a whole. If this card was special summoned by the effect of an Arm Dragon monster, it gains the following effect uh, effects based on its attack. Uh, if it has at least one attack, its name becomes Arm Dragon level 10. If it has at least 10 attack, control of it can't be switched. If it has 100, at least 100 attack, um, it can't be destroyed by battle. If it has a, uh, a thousand attack, then during your opponent's, uh, at least a thousand attack, then during your opponent's turn, send one card from the hand of the graveyard, then target one of the card of the field and destroy it. And if you do, that, uh, Arm Dragon Thunder level 10 gains a thousand attack points. So already just from summoning it from Arm Dragon level uh, Arm Dragon Thunder level seven's effect, you already get those four effects. But then if it has ten thousand attack points once per turn, you can destroy all other cards in the field. One of my favorite end board cards in um. Some test print magic cards that have Pokemon backs and vice versa because they were experimenting with using Pokemon spoiling technique and magic cards uh, back when Wizards made both. Ah. Mm -hmm. Toasty. Nope. I didn't even check. I was reaching down to reset it when I realized I didn't even check. One of my favorite, uh, favorite, like, end board boss monsters to have. Which I don't even summon on my turn because of, because I use IP Mascarena for it. Is, um... Uh... Under, uh... Underworld Goddess of the Closed World. Link 5, I think it requires at least three materials. All of them have to be effect monsters, and, um... One of, uh, one of Underworld Goddess's effect is that um, you could use one of your opponent's monsters as material for uh, for the card. So, like, you know... As long as your opponent d hasn't built a board that can negate monster effects, just at some t point to break their board, use, um, use IP Mascarena and, like, at least two other cards on your field to, uh... And the you know the one the one monster on your opponent's field to uh, as a uh, as um, material for uh, for underworld goddess. I also think IP Mascarena's effect uh, covers underworld goddess's uh, weakness as well. Let me see. Uh, Underworld Goddess of the Closed World requires four plus effect monsters as a Link 5. You can also use one monster your opponent controls the material to Link summon this card. So, off the bat, really good board breaker. Really good, really good combo breaker. With this card is Link Summon. You can negate the effects of all face-up monsters your opponent currently controls. So that's all good. This Link Summon card is unaffected by your opponent's activated effects unless they target this card. Once per turn, your opponent activates a spe uh, uh, effect that special summons a monster from the graveyard. Quick effect, negate the activation. So Underworld Goddess in, in and of itself is really good. IP Mascarena, on the other hand. During your opponent's main phase, you can quick effect immediately after this effect resolves. Link summon one monster using materials you control, including this card. You can only use the effect of IP Mascarena once per turn. A Link monster that uses this card's material cannot be destroyed by your opponent's card effects. So that covers the fact that, um... 
uh, that that covers that fact that it can only be destroyed by by something that targets it. Nope. Three thousand attack though, so like you know you, you've you've got you've a little bit of an uphill battle. <laughs> There's another closed world card, I think. Well, they haven't added it to the. I guess they have. Uh, it's not in the TCG yet. Uh, that are just hasn't uh, been added to the uh, to the card database. It's a generic light fiend link too. Uh, that um. If you use it as uh, if you use it as link material, you can use one of your opponent's monsters to, uh, as um, as uh, link material as well. Hi, bud. I really need to vacuum this floor. So that new um, XYZ Dragon Cannon support is coming out in October. And there is a sort of like, like board lock sort of FTK thing that you could do with it. But here's the thing. Normally it's based on a coin flip. Um, number uh, Arcana Force number 21, the world. What I'm really hoping is that instead of banning Tag Gen Twitter with the Yu-Gi-Oh! misprint. Instead of banning Arcana Force number 21, the world, uh, the, instead they ban the field spell that makes you can choose the effect instead of having to flip a coin for it. That would make it so much more fun. You build up your board, you end on, you end on, um, on, what's the other effect of the world as well? Nope. It's pretty devastating, actually. This card is summon toss a coin. On heads, once per turn during your head end phase, you can send two monsters you control to the graveyard. Skip your opponent's next turn. And there's a one card combo starter with that one. Uh, with the new XYZ, uh, XYZ Dragon Cannon support. Tails is once per turn during your opponent's draw phase. Add the top, uh, top card of their graveyard to their hand. So you can I, basically like that coin flip either wins you the duel or you're giving your opponent more ammo. All the Arcana Force cards are like that. Whenever they're summoned, you flip a coin, they've got one of two effects that uh, that they have depending on what the other uh, result of the coin flip is. But there's a field spell that lets you forego the uh, the coin flip and lets you choose which effect you get. So I'm hoping they banish uh, they ban the field spell instead of banning Arcana Force 21 the world. Sure, why not? They'll probably ban Arcana Force 21, let's be real. Combo for it is nuts. Because the people who made that card didn't think of the consequence of being able to, to um, special summon three monsters, add a monster to your hand, and then use an, uh, add a monster with 3,000 attack points to your hand and immediately normal summon it.
If they get rid of the field spell, it's a lot more fun. What's yikes? What's the song from? Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel. This is key card theme number four. Three mo the three monsters in 3k to the hand. Yeah. And then you immediately get to normal summon it too. Nope. Because the XYZ support is technically Kaiba support. So the idea was you'd use it to either spe uh, normal summon out a blue eyes white dragon or to normal summon out obelisk. Try it with if they don't if if they ban the world I'm gonna run it with obelisk. This card's normal summon cannot be negated. That's interesting. When this card's normal summon in effect, uh, when this when normal summon cards in effects cannot be activated. Either player could target this card with effects. Once per turn during the end phase, this card was special summon sent to the graveyard. You could tribute two monsters, destroy all monsters your opponent controls. This card cannot de declare an attack the turn that this uh, effect was activated. It's not bad. Especially considering with the amount of, um... With the amount of, like, uh, board setup you'd be doing anyway. So what Rada's idea for a Monjome boss monster. Oja Megazord. I want them to make a card called Ojama Njome. It's just an Ojama dressed like Chaz. Or it's Chaz as an Ojama. <laughs> I summon the Ojama machine! Thanks to effects that clear monsters, spell, and traps. What is it? Does Nibiru tributes, right? Nope. Nib tributes, yeah. Which makes it really hard to counter unless you have a card in the field that specifically, like, negates, um... Tributes, and the only card I can think of that does that is um. There probably are others, but the only one I can think of is Mask of Restrict. Or like the very specific cards that say this card cannot be tributed. Oh my God. You okay? You walk kind of funny.
Bug okay? Yeah, it was, it was walking a little funny. I just want to make sure he was doing okay. Uh... E. That dopamine hits hard when you, uh, when you get that combo that goes off just right. Can you see all of me? Walk into my mystery. Nope. Shovel Silver. Uh, sh Shovel Surfer. Wait, Silver Knight. Damn it. I remember the I am all be edit that mixed it with an anime intro that got stuck in my head. What was it called? Like, like step or something like that? Ba -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. Can you see all of me? Somebody took that and edited like a smiling friends thing over, and it's really funny because they sync up uh, they sync up uh, the lyrics with with uh, Pim like screaming. Okay, good. It is this version. I was concerned that it was just the standard version. <laughs> the sewer surfing version. Flintstones, they're a monotonous family. From the town of Bedrock, they're a page right out of history. I need to get a kitchen scale.
cups, teaspoons, tablespoons. No, 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 no. Give me its mass. I need to measure all my baking stuff with mass. Manatee is a unit of measure. Yeah, give me one manatee of chocolate. I hate recipes that use cups and teaspoons. So a vast majority of 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 uh, of 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 recipes. Give me six minutes. Give me six minutes, Manatee, and we'll be done with this in no time. Uh, let, let's make it an even ten, actually. Hi, bud. I know it's hot in here. What to say, I'll say it anyway. Going to 30.50 tonight, yeah. I have to do at least two more, uh, 100 attempts in order to get to my goal of 3,500 by the end of the month. Two attempts left tonight. Hi, bud. I know. Hi, buddy. Can you come here? Come here, little friend. Good boy. Actually, once I launch this attack, I'll open the door. I also need to get one of those thermometers that goes inside your oven and, like, accurately measures what the temperature is. Because I'm not sure if my oven is calibrated cor correctly. <laughs> When it comes to baking, you gotta be precise. I'm actually not sure how you calibrate an oven. I think you need a repairman to come out to do it. Googling, can I calibrate my own oven? Thank you for the 77 month tier one saying, Nay, more than a fortnight of shiny hunting. Indubitably, Derek. But alas, unless I catch it, then sh is shiny month ever truly over? Oh, not that one. Nay, I say nay. <sighs> mm -hmm. 
Nope. Sprig a sprig a Tito. Sprig a sprig a sprig a Tito. Sprig a sprig a sprig a Tito. To dial with the 10 months of tier one. Saying the end is near. The end is near. This one. Ready to pause in case it has uh, lyrics? Oh my god. It is Toho, yeah. This is Night of Nights, right? Oh, or is it UN Owen? Nope. Either way, no shiny tonight. Let's sigh. See that uh that Yu-Gi-Oh card. Someone said they linked it to me on Twitter, but I don't see it. Alright. Let us be checking the fan up. Uh N Pen, please thank you for the dollar on uh, on YouTube. First and foremost, from B-Master, I'm not done with Autumn Week, Tom Fox. We have the queen of the carts, the master racer class, the boo in a shoe, Autumn. She may have ended up in pa uh, Paper Mario, but don't let, it let her scare you away with her Mario Kart skills. And don't ride her ass, uh, or she'll give you a shell. Thank you, B-Master, for that one. Uh, this next one. Uh, meant to do the, uh, from uh, Agent Moose saying, mentioned this a while ago, but got distracted by other things. Based on a post from Magma, Cody, Magma Cody saying, pizza time, idea pizza time gift, but it's time bringing out trays of soup and grilled cheese. 
<laughs> I like that my hat pops in as well. Bam. Pizza time. Let me see if I can time it right. Pizza time. <laughs> Steel Bouncer with this next one. Joins Mario Kart Lobby unannounced, refuses to elaborate further, wins and leaves. The, uh, the, the Chad horrifying 3D Tom. Go back saying, we've added a resident quag cosplaying as a tree man. Oh yeah, there it is. Right over here, it's, uh, it's... I think it's Exeggutor quag. And finally... I... Uh, how do I keep man if... Uh, I have to stop making characters, dude. Bubblegum Cal, here's the president in the year 38, uh, 3018. There she is, President Bongo! The most beloved president of all time! The latest edition of the Tomiverse. Good lord. Did I? Oh. Hold on a second. What? No! Filter! Oh, that's why! Hang on. My crystal ball is broken, it's leaking into reality. Tech support! There we go! Woo! Oh no! Why is it under the Elgato? The Elgato should be like the lowest thing on here. Oh god, it's still leaking out into reality. There we go. President Bongo. Incredible. Neat little way to sort of like see some of the, uh, the, the arts. Pizza time. <laughs> We're leaving it on this. Okay. Should our raid message be? President Bongo 3018. We're gonna raid. Give some love to uh to Evil Toaster. And I will see you guys back here tomorrow for more shiny hunting! Who would have thunk? See you all then. Later.